So I've been doing a lot of work on the runway while I work on these uh, Arduino Speedduino units. I needed to order the Bluetooth module because I didn't get that and um, missing a connector. So the guy sent me that too. And on the two that I uh, built just to sell because I don't want to keep them, they're missing the pins and dummy connectors to short the pins out. So I'd order that stuff before I can sell them on eBay. Meanwhile, here's my runway. Uh, we actually have runway 9 and runway 27, 600 feet long. It's actually a little bit longer if you have the guts to fly between the building and the trees here. It gets you another 200 feet. Uh, I ended the runway here. There's a gully right here that I could fill in, but I decided not to because if you get past here and you ain't off the ground, <laughs> you better just go for the gully because there's a 40-foot obstruction 300 feet ahead of you right here, power lines. Uh, they're probably not 40 feet. They're telephone poles, but I'm putting 40 feet, 300 feet, and the altitude's 1,040. So I found out something else interesting, too. Let's see if I can just click on it and get to it or if I'm going to mess up here. So... As I'm looking to do the Briggs and Stratton 23, I know a lot of people have messed around with those Harbor Freight Predator engines, like the 670 Twin, which is suspiciously just like the Briggs and Stratton, but not really. Once you get into the internals and start looking around, it's not the same at all. Uh, just look at the governor. It's radically different how they do the governor. But anyhow, uh, what I found interesting is Hummel, which has been doing VWs forever, and uh, they're having a huge problem getting the VWs done because I, they're just running out of parts, I think. Um, they've decided to put a Predator 670 from Harbor Freight in their plane. <laughs> and I think they're going to perform at 670 and getting the stuff. And so, you know, they're putting in billet rods and changing the camshaft and putting the aluminum flywheel on there. And the charging coils get deleted because you got aluminum flywheel. So I'm not sure how they're charging it or if they're just running the battery until it goes dead. And uh, they're shaving the heads to raise the compression. And, of course, the governor's removed. All the things I wouldn't have done. <laughs> And uh, I don't know how good it's going. Let's see. All righty. <laughs> well, howdy, tubers. Look what I just flew. <laughs> and it's not a Volkswagen. No, he's cheating. <laughs> yeah. Sacrilege. Yeah. It's on a flight. Well, I'm so worried about the oil pressure here, dude. I mean, I need some elevator trim. Yeah. He wants to die. <laughs> Flies like an ultra cruiser. Yeah. So good. How's the engine? Smoother or <laughs> compared to like a VW? Well, once you get revved up, it, it, All right. it's smooth a bit. I don't pretty rough. All right. Cool. Work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. Need new options because uh, the backlog on the VW You're right, right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you had the ignition on? Yes, sir. All right. So I had uh, looked at that 670, and uh, I don't know, man. Let's see, he's uh, got a concern about the oil pressure. It's got a really rough idle, <laughs> okay? And it's diving now, so, you know, he's going to have to retrim the elevator because it's probably nose heavy. Because that, that engine, I'm pretty sure, is heavier than the Briggs & Stratton 23. And they even put light stuff in it, and it's still kind of heavy. And uh, I've always wondered, the people are running around putting this billet stuff in, the, in these engines, you know, the rods and stuff. How are they rebalancing the crankshafts? Or are they? Are they just throwing that stuff in there without addressing the crankshaft imbalance? Because I don't even know how well the crankshafts are balanced from the factory with the original stuff. But if they're just throwing all this billet stuff in there, and not even, you know, I don't know what they're doing, but, you know, I haven't seen one person on uh, YouTube that's doing these conversions of all this Predator stuff that even mentions having to rebalance the crankshaft, which you would have to do, especially since it's a V-twin. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to stick with the Briggs & Stratton 23, even though it's about $1,000 more getting into it. Uh, I think you're better off that way. So, anyhow, that's what I'm up to right now. Later.